Hi everyone, this is Shanti signing in with another episode of Shanti Finance. So today is a day where I do my Disney or animation um, reimagination series. But I decided to try something very different today. I went to watch that movie um the how to train your dragon part 3 with my son and i thought i got to be toothless now i know that this is completely kind of um, getting into the frightful territory of copyright infringement but it is not exactly a copy of anything from the movie i am adding in a lot of uh, experimental imaginative elements to it that are not exactly from the movie so i'm hoping it will all be good so let's get into the painting part so for the background i had decided to do kind of like a burkish uh, looking uh, background and uh, what i decided was to go for a, like a horizon where the land and sea meets so it would be kind of like the very misty at the horizon line um kind of obscure horizon line where the sea meets the sky a little bit mist over there so the top part is more blue and the bottom part is a little bit greenish blue so that the top is kind of like the sky and the bottom part uh, mimics the sea and uh, kind of getting a nice blending here is essential to have that a uh, smooth feel not so much at the bottom part because it's a sea so it will have ripples but definitely on the top part so at this point i'm just creating uh, ripples and all that and this part really does not matter so much you can do anything in the background it it was totally up to my imagination but you know Bur the island of burke where this dragon um, toothless lives uh, is kind of like uh, surrounded by sea um and there's a lot of skies obviously because the dragon flies so i thought you know meeting of this land and sky uh, or the sea and sky it would probably make a very nice background theme so that's what i did over here on the ripples i did not work a lot you know when i i have a total uh, video on how to paint a sea and uh, ripples and all that waves little waves and all that stuff i could have gone into great detail with that but that was not my intention i wanted to keep it as simple as possible because it's just a little bit of background here most of the paint uh, most of the canvas is just covered by the figures itself now the second part is where i am painting the background on the top where it's essentially the sky with some uh, soft clouds now in this part i did a mistake generally for uh, acrylic paintings what i do is i paint the whole background first and then draw on top of it but you know this was kind of like an experimental piece for me because i did not know how big i wanted to be i didn't even know whether i could would be able to draw toothless because if you have uh, visited my channels any time before this um i don't do much of illustrations or more importantly animation characters so i had no idea of how to handle this i would probably be much at ease if uh, it was kind of like uh if i was told okay imagine a dragon and paint it that probably would have been much easier for me but this is not anyways back to the background so i paint drew it first and then tried to paint around it now in case of acrylics because it dries so fast that is definitely not a good idea and i definitely made a mistake here um in the smaller areas where i'm going around it it made it so much harder to go around the subject and paint um and still get a nice smooth blending so it would have definitely been better uh if i had uh, painted the background of the sky first and then drawn on top of it it was fine on the left hand side but toothless was drawn but on the right side where i intend to put uh, the human character um that i should have drawn after i painted the sky but i had already done, done the drawing and i did not want to lose it it wasn't a big deal though i could have easily uh transferred it to another paper and uh, preserved it and just traced it back on but you know sometimes you get lazy and you pay for being lazy so back onto the tutorial on how to paint toothless so as you can see i first started just by blocking the entire body of toothless with a soft gray color there is not much need of uh, you know smoothing down the paint at this point uh, because 
you, you will have to do multiple layers here to get to the point where you like it you know even though the challenge here for me was once again i do not do this kind of painting illustration or animation um or you know this kind of characters where uh they, the body is smooth shiny yet it has textures it was kind of very very different from what my usual paintings are realistic and or surrealistic that that's that's definitely much more instinctive for me this was not so anyways back onto the eye you can see that i put a little bit of yellow near the eyeball part and then the rest of the areas i put a couple of shades of green so it faded from yellow to yellowish green to much darker green and i used virian green and cadmium yellow for this and kind of uh, then did a little bit of shadows on the side or on the very left hand side of the eyes by adding a little bit of cobalt blue and black to that uh, viridian green now i'm kind of drawing a border outline with a uh, light gray and then bordering it around with dark gray at this point i'm just following a reference photo of toothless from the movie poster and being very true to that because there is nothing i want to change in it this is not the one of my typical re imagination where i painted merida or pocahontas or um twinkle bell and i kind of uh gave them a shape and look of a human if if they were real people how they would look like here i wanted toothless to look like toothless exactly and that was a big challenge for me um it, it was a lot of fun to paint something of this sort um and a lot of fun to paint a character that i love and my son loves too but definitely a big challenge because it is not easy to paint animation character that's there's a reason why people um do like people uh, put their entire careers doing this i mean i cannot just get up one day and decide oh i want to draw this animation you can copy it to some extent but it's, it's not going to be that easy it's definitely a lot of hard work and understanding how to do it so you can see that i'm kind of building up on different areas some of the areas i'm keeping dark some of the areas i'm keeping lighter so it's kind of different shades of gray and gray you would typically think that you are mixing black and white but i'm also mixing in a little bit of cobalt blue in my gray to give it a nice uh, cool gray because that is what i was uh, seeing in the reference photo i don't know if that was absolutely necessary but it, i i just that's how i paint i paint what i see and to me the grays in the reference photo seem to be a lot cooler so you can see i'm going over the same area again and again and trying to make it uh, like more smooth each time back to the eye i uh, added a lot of dark green black mixture on the sides and then making the yellow a little bit more prominent at this point i'm also adding a tiny bit of white around the eyeballs to just brighten it up a little bit and you can always uh, clean up the edges of the eyeball later then i'm putting like small uh, dashes um, inside the eye with a light lime green mix darkening the borders a lot and filling in the inside of the eye with blue black mix more of blue less of black because i think when you add a lot of black anywhere it kind of becomes uh, painting becomes a lot dull because dull black is a very negative blocking kind of character uh, color so that's why i keep on adding other colors to it and anyways because of just the look and the natural look of the character of toothless it will have a lot of grays and blacks so i added as much of uh, variation in those colors as possible to not make it look dull you can see i'm putting the maximum amount of effort around the eyes going little by little creating all the little crevices and nooks and details very slowly just following my reference photo blindly not trying to improvise not trying to do anything from my brain which is very hard for me because when i paint uh, even like realism i i 
pay good attention to my reference photo to see where the light is coming from but I do often change a lot of things because um, unless it is a portrait of a person and I'm going for a, a to get uh, the person to look like that person I do not exactly copy I have a lot of liberty to change things here and there according to my liking and this was not that case so it was a bit challenging of course so as I kept uh, painting along you will see that quite a few times I'm actually changing the basic drawing making it a little bit narrow or fat or something because um, obviously my initial drawing was not perfect and even in the end it, you will see that the toothless it did not come out exactly looking like toothless I think the snout is a little bit longer than it should be the face actually should have been a little bit more flat but um, it's done now so now I'm going to do the scales on the body of toothless so before I ventured onto it I decided to draw them out with my charcoal pencil white charcoal pencil this is from generals and uh, I tried to map it all out it doesn't have to be exact uh, because they are just regular scales but I wanted to make sure that uh, where are the scales go uh, I put where are the scales going so that when I paint there is a less of a difficulty to do that then I created a more uh, lighter gray shade which is has more of white and less of black of course and painted in on top of all the scales like I said it doesn't need to be exact you don't need to fill exactly the uh, charcoal white areas because even if you like paint outside the lines that will totally be fine and uh, if you're worried that oh the lines are sh still showing even after I'm painting that is totally fine so once this acrylic layer dries you can just rub it off with your hand and white charcoal pencil uh, rubs off or erases very very easily that's one of the reasons I use them uh, with my acrylic paintings so you can erase any of those white uh, pencil lines that have left behind with no problem at all now I'm adding some scales on top of the head and uh, these scales took a little bit of time I did it in a two to three different layers uh, obviously for the first time I just did um, the shape of it and then in the next couple of layers I made it more prominent and added light and shadow and all that uh, three-dimensional look and so uh, my all of my animation painting um, experience has been in the childhood like most kids I started my initial in um, like interest in drawing and painting was from Disney animation characters like uh, Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and all of that stuff I'm, I'm sure a lot of us were got into drawing just like me um, because they were interested in those animation characters and and I don't think uh, like since high school I've ever painted any more animation characters not that I don't like them anymore I still watch a lot of animation movies old ones newer ones and all that stuff but I don't do those um, you know animation anime graphic uh, uh, art stuff anymore um, with time my art is taken more direct direction into definitely into realism and surrealism and I think I better stick to that because it was not at all easy so but it was great fun to challenge yourself once in a while and try to do something out of your uh, comfort zone once again this is just for my personal use so I will not be selling off any prints I will not be selling off the original this is just for my son for his room and uh, so I am hoping that I do not get into any copyright trouble and if anybody learns how to draw and paint toothless I don't see a real big problem in that it's not that they're going to recreate the movie or anything please don't um, do anything illegal of that sort um, then I, I don't want anybody else to get in trouble or myself to get in trouble just because of painting such an innocent beautiful character anyways back onto the eye the surrounding of the eyes had a little bit of uh, lots of grooves rather so I'm just trying to paint them and since the light is coming from left to right so the 
grooves that I painted are a little bit lighter on the left and the darker on the right. So this part was more instinctive to me and much easier because it was kind of like realism, just following the direction of light and all that. Um, in, from now on in this painting, as I go on with the darks and lights, you will see that I'm leaving a lot of textures here and there because there is a lot of texture in the skin. The skin obviously is kind of look, looks like leather. It has got shiny areas, lights and darks, lots of bumps, lots of scales, like looking structures. So a little bit of uh, these uh, lights and darks and um, little marks rather or textures are actually required. Now, I could have spent like hours and hours I already spent quite a bit of hours doing this painting but I'm sure if I wanted to make it look exactly like toothless it would have taken about four or five hours more trying to do every detail perfectly but then I thought uh, this the, uh, there is I should draw the line over here and just go for an approximate look and not go for the absolute perfect match because now that's that's that going to be um, that was going to be mind-boggling I'm, I'm never into photorealism I'm into realism but not photorealism anyway so I I don't believe in working on the painting like 80 90 hours or anything of that sort and and that doesn't mean that I'm, I'm saying that there is anything wrong about that obviously I have a huge respect for people who can copy things exactly because it takes a lot of tedious work but it's just not me and I thought just because I wanted to paint something completely out of my zone and I wanted to look pretty much exact doesn't mean that I should have to spend like hours and hours of hours that 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 would make the this fun project tedious project uh, instead of being fun so uh, I just uh, did as much as I could with uh, time frame in mind so anyways I'm going over the uh, scales once again following the direction of light I'm making it dark to light so you can see I'm adding some very light spots where the light is hitting on the scales directly onto the front area of the sky I'm adding a lot of textures and dots and dashes and different directions following the pattern that I can see in the reference photo and uh, um, that that pretty much gave a very close approximation of the look of uh, Toothless in the movie or in the poster that I was going for. But definitely it is not an exact look. Like I said, it would have taken me at least five or six hours more if I had gone for the exact look. And I had to keep on changing um, the drawing and the color values and the shapes and structures over and over again because obviously this is not not my usual cup of tea so it was not really an, an instinctive thing for me on to the neck area of toothless i um, moved on to a round bristle brush because of the natural nature of these bristles in this round brush they add a lot of texture so just by applying the blue black and gray colors uh, next to each other and then trying to blend them with the same brush you're getting a smooth yet textured look which is required for this part of the skin there is not much of scales over here just you know some areas are shinier than the other and that is i'm trying to mimic it as much as possible i, I believe this part to me at least was much easier than the rest of the uh, body just had to follow the light and dark and then kind of partially blend it out and then there are these a uh, little i don't know what these are called in the body of a dragon i don't think anybody knows for sure because after all it's a mythical character so well let's call these like little growths or tentacles or whatever they are I just followed the reference photo and painted them out first and obviously the left hand side would be lighter than the dark the right right hand side and uh, there are a little bit of textures so I'm just going with the reference photo and trying to mimic it correctly now um, 
I I don't know how good a work I did. My son was happy with that and that was enough for me for this painting. I don't know if this is a good tutorial for you to learn or not. I mean, that is something for you to determine. So let me know in the comments how I did and uh, whether you liked it or not. Not necessarily I'm going to do another an animation tutorial anytime soon. It's definitely not my thing, but you know, sometimes you like to have fun and that's what the old intention is. Now I wanted to paint that leather belt around his neck and uh, this was much more easier than the rest of the painting so it was kind of I had to glaze colors of yellow red and brown in this area and just copy the lights and darks and just make some marks to make it look three-dimensional. I also added some purples and blacks for the shadow areas but you know like the color really does not matter so much if you get the values right if you get the lighter areas lighter and the darker area and the shadow areas dark and if you create the highlights in the right areas I think it will eventually turn out right this is a part where it's again like leather so it's obviously has a little bit of textures but not a lot with that toothless is done and so is the tutorial part of the painting now is the part where it came to my wild imagination part so ideally this painting would have been uh, toothless and hiccup uh, toothless's friend in the from the movie but then i thought well that would not only be copyright infringement but then what did i do to the painting i just copying no that's definitely not me so I came across a very funny video of Kit Harrington who plays Jon Snow in A Game of Thrones and Toothless um, because Kit Harrington also um, gave the voice for another character in this movie and I, I saw a very funny movie of Toothless and Kit Harrington, uh, not a funny movie but a funny uh, clip from Universal of uh, Kit Harrington or aka Jon Snow and uh, toothless and that kind of gave me a bright idea at least it seemed like a very bright idea to me i don't know whether it is was actually a bright idea painting john snow and dragon well in the game of thrones uh, john snow does uh, show up in the last series series seven with a dragon but that was more like a realistic dragon uh, or whatever 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 dragons are thought to be as in reality but uh, I thought why not instead swap the real dragon with Toothless and swap Hiccup with Jon Snow and see how that works out. So that's what I did and uh, right now I'm painting the hand and the armor on the hand uh, uh, for Jon Snow and uh, you can see that there is a lot of cute little details on that armor it was fun really fun painting all of those textures and colors and this is where it became a lot a lot simpler for me because this was kind of my thing that I you know I get a lot of reference photos to work together and uh, kind of make a meaning um, and then came the obviously the Jon Snow part where I did a very brief uh, underpainting with the raw umber and purple mixed together and then moved on and glazed colors over it but, but then you know portraits and realism and all that is it's my usual um style it, what i generally do so it that wasn't much of a challenge for me it was it was just the rest of the painting just flowed along very nicely and well whether it worked it did for me it it looks fine to me um, and so I just want to know whether you think that this this was a good idea whether I, I'm sure some artists do have wild ideas right this but what do you think about this painting let me know in the comments it makes a lot of difference to me to know what your thoughts are whether you can you know visualize my image and uh, you know, see eye to eye with it, it I just like no even if you do not I like to know that too and uh, this is the final area of the painting where I'm painting the fur um, edging of the cloak of Jon Snow and it was a lot of fun because it is realistic but I, I'm not going for a supreme um, uh, 
for uh, look just going for um, like a overall look a texture look and it, it was pretty easy and uh, quick especially because it was acrylic and I'm glad that I decided to do this on entire painting in acrylic because I had to change this uh, drawing and painting so many times that if it was if I tried to do it in oils it would have probably taken me months to finish it off anyways uh, that's pretty much it for the painting let me know what you think about this painting or the tutorial um, in general that makes a lot of difference to me if you liked it give me a thumbs up it motivates me like anything to put out more videos and more artwork if you have any other correct characters that you would like me to paint you can let me know i'm not promising anything but i can try and uh, that's about it for this one do not forget to hit the subscribe button so that you are on top of every um every video that i post every week which is twice a week on wednesdays and fridays and do also press the notification bell so that you get notified whenever i put out new videos thank you for watching thank you for going with my ramblings it was a pretty long video and i hope you liked it and if you want to share it with your friends and family who like toothless do do feel free to do that that will make my day thank you very much once again and i will see you soon thank you again